Good morning, guys. Welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori, and today for Keto Monday, I thought I would take you through how I prepare uh, for my week of meals. And this week, I'm going to do some freezer cooking uh, because I do have some shifts at my part-time job, and it's just so easy to run to the garage, open the freezer, grab something, and take it to go that is keto friendly and already prepared. And so we're gonna go through my plan or my process. So the first thing I do, and usually this will happen Thursday, Friday, maybe earlier, I don't know, but I decide what I'm gonna have for lunches the following week. Some days it's easier than others, but this week I decided I really wanted some chicken pot pie. I don't know why, it was just, I'm thinking I want my comfort food. It's getting cooler out. Clearly chicken pot pie is not keto friendly, but we're going to make it that way. So while I was working last night at the football game, go Bucks, I um, decided I would just make the, the filling with chicken thighs, a little chicken stock, some cream, some cream cheese, and then I have a bell pepper and onions. So that's the veg I'm going to add to the, the creamy middle of my chicken pot pie but then I need like a crust so I'm not going to do pie crust but what I'm going to do is a bread a keto biscuit or bread recipe and I'm going to put it on top and bake it together and that will be my pot pie a lot of air quoting today so I knew that was my lunches I'm going to make some chaffle sandwiches those work out really well for um lunches or quick dinners on the go and I'm going to make some bagel dogs with fat head dough and hot dogs. So the first step is I needed a biscuit recipe and I pulled up my go-to keto cookbooks by Christy Sullivan. This one is Keto Gatherings. This is the latest one. They do not come spiral bound. I took it to Staples and had that done. Um, and I also pulled out my they're heavy. Keto Living Day by Day book, which also is full of recipes. What I found was a recipe for Christie's Keto Cornbread. And the basic recipe is whey protein, oat fiber, coconut flour, baking powder, salt, butter, uh, refined fat. It's asking for bacon fat, so I may bake some bacon eggs, water, and corn extract makes it the cornbread. And she bakes hers in a cast iron skillet. I'm going to omit the corn extract. A, I don't have it. And B, I don't need cornbread. I just want the texture of like a dough on top. So I have my cornbread recipe. My chaffles, we all know, is just an egg and cheese. And then the fathead dough, I have to go to a different place to get that recipe which I make it all the time, but I'll have a recipe. So then I make my shopping list after I kind of go through my kitchen and figure out what I already have. Now I already have the isolate, the oat fiber, the coconut flour. I have almond flour, my bells. Um, I do need to get butter. I wanted to make one night this week some pasta Alfredo. I have some zero carb noodles. So I need Parmesan cheese, some cream, pepperoni, lunch meat, and then I am making a brownie. They're uh, brookies for a woman. I took them to my PT um, people the other day and somebody in there wanted me to make them. So I'm gonna grab the brownie mix to do that. So I don't need a big shopping list. I just went to Kroger actually because I knew what I needed there, which was the um, Oscar Mayer all beef hot dogs. They're really pretty clean. I need to get to Costco, but for now those will work. And then I grab some chicken thighs to poach and shred. And I picked up a couple other things that I needed that I knew Aldi wouldn't have. But the next stop is going to be Aldi to get um, these meager little ingredients. And then we're going to make chicken pot pie. I'm going to bring you along with my cooking today. Um, I can show you my haul, but I buy the same stuff every week. So I'm trying to bring you some different ideas. And today I'm drinking water because I need it. With grape in it. It's uh, crystal white. I've already had coffee. I've already been to CVS couponing. 
And then later this week, I'm going to have hopefully a video out where I'm going to sew that apron that I picked up the book at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to sew an apron out of that book. But we're going to run to Aldi and then we're going to come back and we're going to cook. All right, we're in the middle of chaffle making horse sandwiches. So I have the chaffle going here. Over here, I'm going to start the chicken pot pie filling. So I'm just putting some avocado oil in the pan. I have mushrooms, but I want to cut up an onion first for this and a bell pepper while I'm cooking my chaffle. See how that works? I probably should do a half an onion, I think. We'll see. I am gonna make five servings of this, but I think a half a bell pepper and a half an onion will be plenty. So for the base of this, it is bell pepper, onion and mushroom and I bought some pre pre-cut mushrooms and I'm cooking them in my pan back here let me grab my spatula what I prepped this morning is I poached and to poach chicken you boil it in water you drop it in boiling water and then I shredded it like this let it cool and these are chicken thighs for a little more fat and then I shredded it and that's going to go in here, but I need to cook up these onions and peppers first and get my chaffles done. The chaffles are going to be for freezer food. And then once the chaffles are done, I will start working on the fat head dough. But right now I need to get this filling together for the, um, let me put some salt in there for the chicken pot pie. And then we'll make the next step, once I get this filling done, the next step is to make the biscuit dough or the corn, it's actually cornbread batter. And I'll put it on top of each one and bake it in the oven. So I'm just gonna let all this stuff cook up. And then I will probably just build these sandwiches. You don't need to watch that. All I'm doing is putting ham and salami between two pieces of waffle and throwing them in baggies and putting them in my freezer. So I will be back once this is cooked down. I want this to cook down pretty good. I'm sweating it out is what it's called if you watch cooking shows. But I want to give the onions and pepper a head start and then I'll add the mushrooms. Alrighty, all of the vegetables are softened. So I put a couple ounces of cream cheese, just a few strips off of it. I don't really measure. But I want that to kind of melt in here. And then I'm going to add some heavy whipping cream. We're going to let that cook down. And then I have chicken broth that will be added as well. And I did put some garlic in here and let that kind of cook in as well. So we're just going to let this kind of do its thing. I'll leave the cream out and the cream cheese. We're going to make some Alfredo sauce for later in the week. And I need those to... Um, you know, for that recipe, I'm not going to eat it tonight, but I want to make it so it'll be in the fridge, if that makes sense. And then as soon as I get this cheese all melted in here, I'll add the chicken. And what I will use the chicken broth for is to thin it up. So because this will be kind of thick. And the chicken broth will also bring some more chicken flavor to our filling. Now, I know a lot of people would use like a cream of mushroom soup, something like that, but I don't have that option when I eat keto like this. So I just kind of improvise. The cream cheese is a nice thickener, and by letting this boil down, the cream itself will thicken. So this is basically my base of um, like using a cream of chicken soup or cream of mushroom or something of that nature. And my chaffles, I think I'm down. I've got probably one more to make. And I may save a couple out, not as sandwiches, to make like um, garlic bread to have with my pasta. So I think that would be delicious. 
And I have a couple that I let get a little too crispy for a sandwich, but that'll be perfect for garlic toast. So we'll leave those in the fridge. The rest will go in the freezer. So when I work my next job, next time I work part time. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of this stock. And if you can see right now, it's just thinning it out because we're gonna drop all the chicken in that I shred by hand. And see, it almost immediately is gonna absorb all that sauce, the thickened sauce. And so I need to add some more broth. And the thing is too, when I let this all heat up together, it will thin down. I mean, it'll thicken up. There. We're gonna let this kind of do its thing and come together. And then we'll make the batter and I'll show you how I'm gonna portion it so I can take it to work this week for lunch. But right now I'm just gonna let all of this kind of warm up and cook together. Now I'm going to make the batter and I can't unfortunately give you this recipe because it's in a book that I showed you in um, keto gatherings. So what you'll need to do if you want this specific recipe is you'll need to purchase that book because I don't think this was a free recipe that was out there for the world. I'm just flattening down my food. I'll show you in a second, but I did get um, all of my pot pie mixture into different containers. I have four like this and one like that. I just don't have five. And I sprayed them with cooking spray and then I put the um, pot pie mixture in. I'm debating if I want to dot the top with cheese. I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. Or maybe butter it when it comes out. Ooh, that would be tasty. So these were all the ingredients that this specific recipe calls for, except for the, um, cause it's a keto cornbread recipe. It doesn't have the keto or the corn extract in it. It does have coconut flour. And whenever I am working with coconut, oh, and it also has oat fiber. So whenever I'm working with those, they're considered a thirsty grain or a thirsty type. It's not really a grain, but you know what I'm saying, like a flour. Um, mix it up and I like to let it sit for a few minutes to allow all uh, the liquids to absorb so that it, it doesn't tend to be as dry after the fact. And if you have ever overused oat fiber or coconut flour, it's like drying in your mouth. But when I, and this has a lot of fat in it too, which is nice. But when I let it sit like this, just for a couple minutes, and let it absorb what it wants. It doesn't tend to be as dry when I cook it. And if you'll see here in a minute, it'll start thickening up. But what I'm gonna do is get it into my piping bag. Now, you don't have to use a piping bag. If you wanna pipe it, you can put it in a zip top bag. I just happen to have a lot of these because I bake a lot. Um, and I like it to look pretty. Because for me, sometimes it's just about being pretty, you know? You know what I'm saying? So I need to get a type of a scoop. Well, it actually is thickening up pretty nicely. You know, this is not bread. So we all need to remember that. This is not bread. It's not gonna ever be bread. It's going to be, um, you know, it's keto. I'm gonna sit this down here. I should have a taller cup, but that's okay. I'm gonna sit it in the pan, in the, mixing bowl here and I'm going to pour it into the piping bag slowly so in case it tips over Ooh, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing but I'm just tip pouring it in here into the center and then I'm going to let it sit in this bag for maybe three four minutes and just let it do its thing absorb all the stuff there we go. All right. Any keto batter recipe will do for this. I happen to be using this one because this is the recipe I have. Now, you see how 
It's very thin. And that's why another reason that I would like to pipe it. I'm hoping to keep it to sit, keep it sitting on the top. I'm gonna take one of my clippies and just close the top so it doesn't pour out and let it sit here and hopefully it'll thicken up a little bit when the egg and the oil um, absorb into the coconut flour and the oat fiber. And again, you don't have to do that. This is something I'm choosing to do when I use these uh, ingredients because that's what works for me. So when I'm ready to pipe, I will come back. Like I said, I'm gonna give it about five minutes and that's just enough time for me to load the dishwasher and get some cleaning done so I can take the next step, which is going to be, we're gonna start the Alfredo sauce and then we'll do the fat head dough. But I'll pipe first because I gotta get this in the oven. It's getting hot in my house. Alrighty, it's been a few minutes seems to be a little thicker. So what I do is turn it upside down, just like I'm making piped frosting. I turn it over, I cut the tip off. Um, because this is a little thin, I didn't wanna cut it too close. And what I'm gonna do first is just topping each one with a little bit of the corn flour or cornbread mix. And then if I have extra, I'll go back. There's not a lot on here. I mean, this is supposed to make an entire cornbread. You know, so I don't wanna have way too much portion size for me, but, oh, I made a mess back there. And then this one here, because it's kind of flat, it will just have a little bit, you know, there'll be openings and things, and I'm okay with that. So that is everybody's cornbread portions for one week of lunches, and how quickly that came together. Super easy. I'm going to, um, I won't let you listen to it, but I'm gonna pound the pan down before I stick it in the oven, I'm gonna bake it at 350 and I will show you when it comes out, what it will look like. And these containers have lids, this doesn't. This will be tomorrow's lunch, uh, just because, and um, these will have lids on them. All right, here is my recipe for fat head dough. Everybody seems to have their own. I found this on Pinterest, and it is two tablespoons of cream cheese, a cup and three quarters of mozzarella, three quarters of a cup of almond flour, salt, and then I put some Italian seasoning, which I use this garlic and herb. Now, the directions say melt your cheeses and then stir in. I just melt it all together, minus the egg. There's one egg in this. Um, I'll bring the egg out here in a second. I do microwave this in 30 second intervals. And then I will show you um, what the egg is gonna look like when I combine that. I'm stirring my Alfredo sauce, which is about a half a stick of butter, probably three ounces of cream cheese, and some garlic, and a cup of heavy cream. That's just melting back there. Um, but I'm gonna put this in the microwave. I have 10 hot dogs. Generally, I can get 10 of them wrapped. I do cut them in half, but they don't have to be. And I think this time I will do maybe the whole hot dog and show you how to do like a bagel dog and we'll put some everything seasoning on top maybe or just some salt but right now I'm going to start melting or stirring this melting in the microwave for 30 second intervals it usually takes about a minute and a half to two minutes depending on the strength or the you know how wattage your microwave is but it'll usually take me about a minute and a half and then I'll get a plastic cutting board out to smoosh it down on Smoosh it, that's a technical term. All right, hang on one second. Alrighty, while the cheese is in the microwave for its little 30 second, I will finish up the Alfredo sauce. So like I said, it was about a half a stick of butter, maybe two ounces of cream cheese, um, a cup of heavy whipping cream, salt, pepper to taste. I did not salt it yet. I did throw in some garlic because that's how I like it 
Um, your mileage may vary on that. You do what you want to do. The basic recipe for Alfredo is this, for a keto. And again, there's all different recipes out there. This is the one that I like, but I really encourage you to get out there on Pinterest, get some cookbooks, and really kind of try things out. But this is tried and true. Then I add five ounces. I get this at Aldi. It's Priano freshly shredded Parmesan cheese. I wouldn't use the powdered because it um, it won't really dissolve and melt. There's too many fillers in that stuff. It is a guilty pleasure, I won't lie, but I wouldn't recommend it for this. And if you can see, the cheese starts to melt and you just really wanna kinda keep, keep working it until your cheese melts into it. Now, when I put this in the fridge, if it's too thick tomorrow, I will just, or when I want to go to make my Alfredo pasta, I may just add some warm water when I'm heating it up to thin it out to whatever consistent, <laughs> that's the oven telling me that our pot pies might be done. Maybe, let's test. No. Probably another five minutes. Since I've never used this recipe on top of something else, I started at like 10 minutes. We're up to about 20 at this, at the end of this five minutes, it'll be about 20 minutes. And remember, it was a, it was a moist batter, so it will take a little longer to cook. So there it is. That is how easy Alfredo sauce is. Just your basic, basic Alfredo. It will thicken up. I'll let it sit on this warm, you know, keep warm for a few minutes. Then I'll let it come to room temperature and I'll pack it up in a Tupperware and put it in the fridge. And then when I want dinner to come home from work, I can just heat the noodles up and combine this. And I have my chaffles, so maybe I'll make a little bit of um, garlic toast to go with it. But this is it. This is my Alfredo sauce. It's really good. Now it is a little thin. Like I said, I'll let it cook down a little bit, but that's it. That's it for that, and I'm working on my cheese still. Now you really want to keep a close eye on this. This is needs probably 30 seconds more. Um, I would say till I'm able to add the egg to it. I mean, it's definitely warm, but it's not quite as pliable as I'd like, so I'm gonna put it in for 30 more seconds. And you really want your egg at room temperature. So if you didn't take it out, you want to put it in a cup of hot water and let it come up. Because when you put cold egg on warm cheese, you could A, cook your egg, but more importantly, you don't want to cool this cheese mixture down. So I'm going to put this in for about another 30 seconds. And then we're going to whip in that egg and then turn it down on my plastic board. And then I just pat it out. And you're going to want to wet your hands for that, but I'll show you how I do that. This is ready. It looks pretty smooth like a pizza dough. So I, I just make a hole in the middle. It's warm, so I don't want to use my hands right now. But once the egg is in here and I start mixing it, eventually I will probably... Let me take my jewelry off. I will probably um, come in here with my hands just to really get this egg combined. It's just what works for me. If you keep stirring it, it will eventually come in, but I have no patience for this. So I just kinda, you know, get my hand in there. I'm the only one eating it. If that weirds you out, I'm sorry. All right, so this is all mixed up. Had to take my Alfredo sauce off. It's done. Now it just has to cool. Part of my prepping is getting lots of things done at one time. Now I'm just putting water in my bowl that I was mixing in. You really have to keep your hands wet because this stuff will stick. I know for sure that we're gonna go this way, pizza cutter. Now, if I say, 
Oops. Well, that was bad. That wasn't a straight line at all. So we're going to smush it back together. And we're going to go that way and make it a straight line. How about that? It doesn't really matter, guys. All right. I think I'm going to get eight. It's probably what's going to happen. And then I'll just have the other two hot dogs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll have the other hot dogs for dinner. Hang on one second. Oh, I got them out of the oven and they look delish. But let's get this done first because it is kind of on the time sensitive side. Sometimes I need one of these. It just depends how sticky the dough is. If you let it sit up for a few minutes, typically you can lift it up. But if not, it's fine. This is all about portioning it at this point. But look. It's one piece. I let it come to a little bit of a temperature. Cool it off a little bit. And then I'm just wrapping my hot dog around it. And then I like to kind of just give it a little bit of a roll. And I stick it on the pan I have here behind me. And once these are all wrapped up, I'm going to go back. Since I flavored the dough, I probably won't use the everything seasoning. What most likely I will do is um, just sprinkle them with a little bit of the Himalayan salt. So they taste like a bagel pretzel, maybe like more like a pretzel dog and not necessarily a um, like an everything bagel dog. Okay, I don't have um, like pretzel salt, but I have my Himalayan. So we'll just use a little bit of that. You could also sprinkle like garlic or like I said, everything but the bagel seasoning. But I chose to go more of the Italian route with the um, Italian seasoning in here, which is fine. Now, again, where I'm deviating from the recipe, I'm putting these in the freezer and I'm going to freeze them hard. And then when I'm ready to bake them in a couple hours, I will bake them at 425 so that the um, the dough browns up and then I will probably take two for a meal so this will be four meals so between the chaffles and this I have eight on the go dinners for the next couple weeks and then I need to show you my pot pies let me go throw this in the freezer all right so far we've got here is the finished alfredo sauce look how thick that is oh that'll be delicious and what i don't use i can freeze um, but i'll probably eat it this week no maybe not i'll probably end up freezing some and then look at that oh doesn't that look delicious i mean basically it is chicken pot pie with a biscuit sitting on top if we're going to be honest so that's what we have so far the last thing I have to make is in the freezer, and I will show you what that looks like when they come out of the oven. All right, guys, here are the bagel dogs. They melted a little bit, but I'm okay with that. I just have to let them cool. Then I will pack them up, and we are done for the day. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will talk to you later. Bye.